So today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're going to be talking about window cleaning myths. Are they right? Are they wrong? Do you believe them? Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Hey, if it's your first time taking a, a listen or look or gander, <laughs> thanks for hanging out. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, have a look around. If you like everything, binge away, my friend. Listen to every episode. We are like almost 150 straight weeks. You got lots of content to go back and catch up on. Some of them better than others. Um, but I definitely appreciate you taking a look. And if you're one of the OGs, one of the cool kids, if you are one of the nations, somebody who watches every episode, you thumbs up every video, which by the way, if you're watching on YouTube right now, go ahead and thumbs up because, you know, that'd be cool. Um, but most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, being that I am a rep for window cleaning resource, windowcleaner.com. Thank you so very much. It is because of you that I get to wear name brand flip-flops in the summer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, if you want to be one of the cool kids, uh, my number is 862-312-2026. 862-312-2026. Give me a call. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Or I could put it in your cart. Or anything. That's what I'm here for. It doesn't cost you any extra to use me as your rep, but I want to be your rep. I want to be everybody's rep. All of you watching, I want to put in all your orders because that's how I make my cheddar. So definitely, definitely let me do that for you. At the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code also for 5% off uh, and free shipping. So stay tuned to that. Uh, but thank you. Either way. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm this is weeks of growth is, is nothing. I'm doing this just while I'm in quarantine because what the heck, right? What the heck? If you're in quarantine, what else can you do to keep yourself busy? Look, I had, I had to get these things, these like stretchy bands because I can't even get to the gym. I took up running. What? Running is horrible. Absolutely horrible. I couldn't run today because my knees are so jacked up from running. Anyway. Hopefully you're uh, you're uh, surviving. Hopefully you're not sick and tired of ramen and frozen pizzas quite yet. Um, but either way, this is going to be a fun episode. This is like, you know, let's not talk about that thing that's going on that everybody's driving crazy. Let's just sit back and just, let's talk about some window cleaning myths. I would love to hear it too. If you have more window cleaning myths, comment down below on this video on YouTube and tell me what they are. These are fun. Uh, these are a lot of fun. Because I get these... Probably at least, at le I get w all of these at least once a month. Some of them I get multiple times a week. It's crazy. It's crazy. But these are some myths regarding window cleaning. Uh, the first one is you can't use a razor. I get people all the time like, hey, how do you know what's tempered glass? Uh, usually it's written on the window, but if it's newer construction, anything that comes in contact, which is in your level of, of contact that you can touch is tempered. Why do you ask? Well, I just, I got to know what windows I can use a razor in or not. You can absolutely use a razor on tempered glass. Absolutely. Now there is something and it's in a debate that some tempered glass has something on there. It's a defect. Their glass finds is technically considered fabricating debris. And if you break one of those little slivers of glass off that you can scratch windows or that tempered glass somehow magically scratches it does not it is the same as a regular glass i've been scraping windows for 15 years uh, i've run into fabricating debris one time one time so you can absolutely use a razor on tempered glass now if you don't agree with any of these and you think these myths are truths i'd love to hear it by the way comment down below um but that's a big one and here's the other thing if there's silicone on the glass or if there's paint on the glass, there's nothing better than a razor for that. Like it is just so absolutely fast. If there's tape on the window, if there's any of that, use a razor. Nice six inch Triumph is my go-to. A lot of people like that Unger uh, Ninja scraper also. 
but that is just it it just is awesome now for you for those of you that didn't know you could even use razor and glass it's all about hardness and glass is actually a lot harder even though you can break it the the hardness it's the um home scale i think maybe wrong but uh it's the the hardness of the tip of the razor compared to the glass itself like a diamond cutting a diamond you can't use glass to cut a diamond because diamonds are harder you could use diamonds to cut glass it's the same thing you can use a razor totally can use a razor now a couple things that will scratch glass with a razor is if you let that razor rust at all a rust will scratch glass now you're going back to hardness razor is just under glass but rust is just over glass, so rust will win in that thing. So don't ever, ever, ever use a rusty razor. That's why when you see the painter who uses their razor and they're just destroying the window, look at the razor. They've used the same razor for three years. It's just garbage. They don't care, and you get blamed for it. So you can absolutely use a razor on glass. Absolutely. Uh, another one is you can't clean in direct sunlight. I get this one a lot also, is that people are like, well, I got to go to a waterfall pole because you can't clean windows in the sun. That's not true either. Now, if you want to go to a waterfall pole, I love a waterfall pole. It's one of the most amazing tools that have ever been invented for window cleaning ever in the history of ever. But you certainly can clean in the sun, even if you're in Arizona, even if you're in Vegas, even if you're in the middle of uh, wherever. Now, I'll tell you a, t a trick that you probably already figured out, but when you scrub it for the first time, it, goes, it evaporates right away. But that's called flashing. Hit it again with a mop, and all that water will stay there. It's that instant flash from water to steam that goes away. You mop it again, and the water will sit there. It's pretty interesting. Now, you can also do two-handed method, use more water, use wetting agents, things like that to keep it wet even longer. But you certainly can clean in the sun. Um, that same thing I've heard about water fit poles. Can they clean in the sun? Like, can they, I heard they don't do as good because it dries too fast. Absolutely not. A water fit pole in the sun works as amazingly, if not better, than in the shade. And the reason is, is because there's nothing in the water, no matter what, if it sits there or not. But as it sits there, it can collect things out of the air. If it's really dirty air, it'll pull minerals out of the air and then actually spot the glass. When it dries super, super fast, there's no time for that to happen. So it actually is even more impressive. Another one is, uh, will a water-fed pole uh, break glass because you're putting cold water on the glass? No, I've never, ever heard of that ever happening. Now, if it's happened to you, maybe something else, but you're not using ice cold water, right? And the other thing is, it's just like if it's sunny out and it starts to rain. You've never had a really hot day where a storm quick comes in and all your windows shatter. It just doesn't happen. You're not changing the temperature all that much, and glass is very, very resilient. So you could certainly do that and know it won't crack the glass. Now, potentially using hot water in the wintertime could break glass from what i've heard now that's why a lot of the heated companies they go to just warm water there's not really a huge benefit in my mind for the warm stuff anyway so there you go don't use hot water in winter funny story actually my old boss this is like 20 well forever ago he uh went outside and his windshield wipers had uh, ice all over it and his windshield was all iced over and he says i don't have time for this he went back inside got a bunch of hot water in a bucket walked outside <laughs> dumped it on his windshield and shattered his windshield it wasn't wasn't the brightest fella but there you go that that's the the heat changes regular water fed won't crack glass even if it's hot even if it's hot Another one is that high rise is the most dangerous form of window cleaning. It's so dangerous. High rise, so dangerous. I'll tell you, if you do high rise right, it is super, 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 super safe. Now, you got to know what you're doing. Like I 100% and every single person I've ever talked to about high rise, I see you got to get trained because there's so much that goes on. You need to know how to self-rescue yourself. You need to do all that. Talk to Jeff Scott. He is awesome. That's where I did my training. Uh, he's super, super good at what he does. Uh, and he travels. So anyway, 
uh, is green safety. Safety green. Sorry, Jeff. Messing it up. But talk to him about training if you're going to do high rise. But if your pins are in your roof rigs and your rope protectors are on and your gear is just upkept, it's super, super safe. Literally extremely safe. The problem, the unfortunate side of high rise is that 99% of everything that happens in high rise is human error. If you don't do something right, there's more potential to fall and have accidents. But the most dangerous thing that we have in our industry is actually a ladder. And I'm guessing that almost all of you use a ladder. That's the most dangerous. More people fall, get hurt, ER visits, and deaths from ladder than anything else in our industry. It's crazy. I know that you guys know and have heard the stories, but uh, look at Diego Garcia. Super awesome guy. Fell from a ladder. Was in a coma for 45 plus days, 43 days, 48 days, something like that. Uh, I know another guy that I had uh, was actually my brother's sergeant back in Iraq a while ago. This is years ago. I was kind of talking him through. He wanted to start a business. We talked. All of a sudden, I hadn't heard from him for a week or something. I called him up. What's going on, man? Haven't heard from you. He's like, I fell. Fell off of a ladder on a first floor roof and uh, broke both of his ankles. And one of them ended up not healing and he ended up amputating it. Like, these are serious things. Not to scare you, but that's ladders. Ladders are actually way worse than high rise. So don't be scared of that. The only thing that's hard of high rise is getting your foot over the edge because that's where your brain's like, mm, no, I am a full figured male. I am not going to go on one single rope. That's not going to hold me. But they are. That's what they're designed for. So high rise is not the most dangerous thing in our industry by any means. Uh, rain dirties glass. That's another myth that uh, we've heard. Like even people too are like, well, I, I wouldn't do a seven day rain guarantee. I mean, that would cost me so much money. Why? Well, because every time it rains, I'd have to go, no, 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 no. I've done a rain guarantee, seven day rain guarantee. We've talked about this a hundred times, but the rain guarantee is not to actually go back and clean windows because rain does not dirty windows 99% of the time. But what it is, is to keep you, your customers on your schedule. Keep them on your schedule. They will reschedule if the rain is coming because they think it dirties the windows. Now, let me explain how a window looks dirty or spotted after the rain. So the air is dirty. The air is just dirty no matter where you are. There's always stuff in the air from pollen to dust to whatever. Very, very fine. You may not see it. But wear a mask an entire day and you'll see it all on the thing of what you breathe. Your lungs are great at cleaning that out. And for the most part, we don't get sick from it. But it happens to land on your glass and it lands on your glass, continues to land on the glass and it is uniform on that glass, right? So if it's uniform on the glass itself, then you don't see the dirt on the glass until it rains. Once it rains, the water goes on the window, covers the whole window and as it dries, you've seen it, it shrinks down into droplets and then the droplets evaporate. Now, just like pure water, if there's something in the water, which is all the dirt that was on the wa- window, is now concentrated in all these droplets, of these little droplets of now dirty water, the water disappears, the dirt's left on the glass, and it's in really concentrated dots. It looks like water spots. It is water spots. But it's not the rain that does that. It's the dirt that was on the window that does that. So when you have rain coming down, as long as it doesn't really hit anything on the way down, because obviously trees are dusty, you know, if it's hitting a bunch of branches or it's splashing off the ground, of course that makes dirt. Not the rain, it's what the rain is hitting. But if you have a clean window and you let it rain and the rain dries, there will be nothing on the glass. There just won't. 15 years of doing um, uh, seven day rain guarantee. Yeah, what, 15, <laughs> 15 years of doing a seven day rain guarantee. I had one lady call me back. And she got there, looked at her windows, like, well, the windows are good. We don't have to do anything. She's like, oh, I thought that you just came back and redid them. No, no. One lady. She wanted free window cleaning. But this happened once in 15 years. Now, 
A lot of people think that they'll be going doing that all the time and people are going to misuse it. They're really not. Because they're not even going to remember the warranty comes into play after the fact. They only remember the warranty is there so that they book it in the first place. There's nothing worse than having a, man, the next three, four, four, five weeks are booked up solid. Rain comes and everybody from one day is like, oh, I want to reschedule. Well, what are you going to do? Sit on your butt for uh, a day? Or are you going to um, get a rain guarantee so you can keep working? Now, if it's downpouring, that's just not fun to clean it anyway. So you don't need to clean in that. But rain does not dirty windows. If you think I'm wrong, comment. And it's a great time if you're watching on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. I know it sounds dumb for the thumbs up, but it helps us with uh, everything. Gets the videos out there. And again, sales is my dig. And if I get my message out there, I can help a lot more people than I can by talking to them individually on the phone. So there you go. Thanks for the thumbs up either way. Um, another one, this is one of my favorites, uh, because let, let, let the record show that a gross of rubber is not a made-up number or a made-up word. A gross is a measurement. That is a measurement. Now, Almost all rubbers, with the exception of uh, Mormon, Mormon comes in 10 packs. Everything else comes in 12 packs, right? So you have a dozen. If you have a dozen dozens or 12 dozens, that's 144. And 144 is a gross. Look at that. You've now learned something if you didn't know that already. A lot of people know that, but a lot of people call and they go, Whoa, what is a, why is a gross so much more? Well, it's because that's a measurement. You're getting 144 rubbers as compared to a 12-pack. It's very hard, especially on chat. People go, what is a gross? I said, gross is a number. It's 12 times 12, 12 12-packs, 12 144 rubbers. And they say, yes, but what is a gross? How many are in there? Or like they don't quite get the... A gross is a number. Now, I knew this for a while because my family itself was in manufacturing for a while. Um, and, uh, that's how things come like a gross of something. It's what, like the usual largest quantity that you buy is a gross of something, but yeah, a gross. So now, you know, you can buy single rubbers and black diamond. You can buy 12 packs in anything, 10 packs in Mormon, and you can buy grosses in every brand except Mormon because Mormon, you can do, uh, 10, 10 packs which would be 100, not 144. So if you want their big uh, thing, it's actually 100 rubbers, not 10. And when people ask, why do people need that much rubber? It's, I change rubbers daily. I would flip the rubber, because there's two sides technically to a rubber. I would We flip the rubber every day and change it every other day. So you go through a lot of rubbers very, very quick. Uh, all County Window Cleaning was doing about a gross a week uh, in their peak. Like, that's a lot of rubber. So, that's why there's a gross. That's why grosses exist. Um, but, either way, now you know. I do like that, though. People are like, why don't you just say it's 144? Well, gross is a number, so there you go. Um, <laughs> another myth that uh, is, I think, probably one of the worst ones for business in general is that if I call or send anything to my customers, they're going to think I'm greedy. Now, this isn't a big common one because there's a lot of us who are like, well, yeah, we're sending reminders. When I do my call list twice a year, I've had maybe four or five people in all of my history that have been like, don't call me anymore. Or I don't need this service anymore. Or something like that. But everybody else is not upset because they're not thinking about it when you call the oh man thanks for calling me i actually was thinking about calling you i just i lost your number or i forgot or i was gonna call you this weekend or i just lost my track of t it is so helpful for people when you call them to book schedules say hey it's jersey from xyz we're just putting together our spring window cleaning schedule and i didn't see you on there i wanted to know if uh uh what day of week works best for you Oh man, thanks for calling. Yeah, uh, geez. Uh, I actually, Tuesdays would work great. People want to be back on the schedule. They want to be reminded 
They want to have clean windows. That's why they hired you in the first place. But you got to remind them. If you don't remind them, then they're not going to always remember you. It's your job to remember them. So don't think that your customers will get annoyed because you call them once in the spring, once in the fall. Uh, don't think they get annoyed because you sent them a postcard. Mail itself is so in, unintrusive. It's like social media content. You can put out as much content as you possibly want. Nobody gets annoyed with it. They just pass over it. They won't look at it if they don't want to. Right? It does not annoy them when you are on top of it trying to help them remember to, you know, book services with you. So, yeah. That's one. That's it. I I wish everybody out there would do that because you would grow your company so much more. You would have so many more happy customers if you did a call list twice a year. You sent out emails once a month and postcard once a month. Just staying relevant. That's as important as Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all those com- pages. Super, super important to stay relevant. We talk about this all the time, but the same reason McDonald's has billboards and, you know, radio ads and magazine ads and... TV ads. Everybody knows what a McDonald's is, but yet they still advertise and everything because they got to stay relevant. They got to stay for forefront of your brain. Anyway, yeah. Another one that I uh, find interesting is people who use pure water in their bucket. Now, on top of the chemist, which we all have, like some people are out there like, oh, all I use is Dawn, TSP, ammonia... And uh, a little pinch of uh, kosher salt. Whatever. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You know what works great? Dawn. You know what works great? GG4. That's it. Some people want to put in slipping agents and things like that. I never have needed it, but you certainly could, I guess. But putting pure water in a bucket completely defeats the purpose of anything. It does not help. And the reason is, is because as soon as you put the pure water in the bucket, the pure water is not pure. Your bucket's always dirty. There's always a little bit of dirt in there. And now all of a sudden that dirt is part of the water and your water's not pure. It's just regular water. As soon as you dunk your scrubber into that water, it is regular water. So you went through all that time to make the water, put it in the bucket, all for it just to be regular water. That does nothing. If you say it does, you're wrong. <laughs> I get in debates with people. Uh, it's 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 the concept of, of scrubbing a window first and then coming back over it with pure water. Well, your pure water has to be pure for it to not leave spots, right? So if you scrub a window with soap, you need all that pure water to rinse off all of the soap, all of the dirt, all of the residue everything off the window before what's just left is pure water. You're going to clean three times as long, probably longer. You're going to rinse three times as long. Plus you have to then scrub, switch things. just doesn't make sense. So using pure water for anything other than just pure water or rinsing down a car or something like that just doesn't make much sense because once your water is not pure, it's just water. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of Don, another one is that uh, Don leaves a film. Now, this is a debate. I, I've i used Dawn for my entire... I go back and forth. I've tried GG3. I've tried GG4. I've tried the Mormon stuff. I've tried them all. And I keep going back to Dawn. I like it. It's easy. It can be bought at a gas station on the way to a job if somebody forgets something. It's just so easy to have. And it works great. Dawn does not leave a film. It may be in your head. Uh, But it doesn't leave a film. I've never seen it leave a film ever. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're adding. I don't know if you're putting so much soap in that that it's maybe leaving a film that way. I don't know. But Dawn does not leave a film. There was a guy, and it was maybe a year ago now, that jumped on and he says, I don't know why you professionals are using Dawn. Just, you know it leaves a film and you still use it. And everybody's like, what? It comes up very random. I use GG4 because it doesn't leave a film. Well, that's cool. I mean, you can have your preference, but Dawn does not leave a film. It does not. And if I'm wrong, comment down below and tell me it it does, but it doesn't. Dawn is great. Dawn works beautifully for window cleaning. There's a lot of other ones that work great, too. I know Joy and uh, E-Cover, if that's still a thing, but anyway. Um, 
Another one that I I don't even really debate anymore. It's very hard to debate. Listen, no matter how long I've owned a company or what I've done, they always go, well, you're a salesman, right? So the next kind of two of these are kind of ones that it's it's frustrating. And I want to debate them, but no one's going to care anyway. But the first one is putting a pre-filter in front of a DI. Everybody says, well, I want my DI resin to last longer. I'll put a pre-filter and they last so much longer. No, it doesn't. And the reason is, is because the micron level of a pre-filter doesn't stop the, the things that are being pulled out of the water by the resin. Resin can't pull big chunks of rust out of water. It's not like that. It's using particles. It's pulling a, a certain micron level. By putting a pre-filter first, that's stopping everything usually down to that 0.5 microns or whatever. It's rust, it's chunks, it's pieces. It's not taking anything else. The amount of money it costs to replace the filter being only $10, mind you, a pre-filter is like 10 bucks. It costs more money to change that pre-filter out than the amount of money in resin that you save. All you've done is made something that's uh, more um, cumbersome because now you gotta carry all these pieces it doesn't do anything. If it if it does do something, it's in your head. It truly does not, unless you're not equating the things right, it just doesn't do it. That's why no DI system on the planet comes with a pre-filter installed because it does not do anything. A pre-filter comes into play on an RODI system. An RODI system, reverse osmosis and DI, it's all about the RO. The RO needs to have a carbon filter before it and a sediment, which is usually what the carbon filter is in a lot of the newer systems. And the reason is, is because that's a self-cleaning membrane and it's relatively sensitive. So you got to stop the chunks before it goes in there and then ends up doing damage in that because the membrane is self-cleaning, it's self-flushing. And an RO membrane has to have the chlorine removed. Chlorine will destroy an RO membrane. Again, pretty sensitive for for a membrane for a filter that's why it's on that system the di is the finisher but you do not ever need a pre-filter before the di there's a lot of people out there who do that a lot of people who call and say hey i'm blowing through resin i need to put a pre-filter on no 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 that won't do anything you need an ro di oh well i have a di so i'll just add an ro it's not really how it works everything has to then be plumbed and fitted together like there's not just an RO that you can attach to because you need a pre-filter, an RO, you need everything to um, be regulated, uh, you need the check valves to work, and then you also need your discharge to be kind of regulated to the same flow that everything else is taking. It's kind of a big thing. I Like I said, I've been doing it for 15 years, which isn't as long as some of you, I know, but I've never built my own system, ever, not ever. And I've never been in sales all my life. I've only been doing this for three, four years. But... There's no necessarily, there's no add-on for that. If you're running too much DI and you're blowing through resin, don't go out there and get a pre-filter. You're just using the wrong system. There's two systems for a reason. DI only works well in soft water, but RODI works better in everything. So, but RODIs are more expensive. So, if you got questions on that side of it too, to dive a little bit more in, again, 862-312-2026, just call me, text me, whatever. Ask the questions. If you want to email me, by the way, questions on any of this stuff, jersey at windowcleaner.com. You can shoot me a message and we'll go that way. My last one and I uh, got in an argument again this morning. This one just is so, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm usually a happy guy, but I'm over this one. And it's that what if it pulls don't work. Keep using water for pools because I'm getting all your customers. Listen. Listen. To the dumb, dumb dummies who say that. You don't have one. You don't own one. You don't use one. Maybe you've used one once. Maybe the resin didn't work or the brush sucked or the pole was horrible. Maybe it was a 10-year-old system and it didn't work well because you've never used it. If I go up and hand anybody in the entire world a squeegee and say, Do that window. You've seen people do squeegeeing for the first time. It's horrible. You have to get used to it. It takes time to do what we do. Same thing with the water for pull. It's a lot quicker, but if somebody's messing something up, it's because 
they're lazy. They didn't do it right in the first place. They're not checking their TDS. They just didn't know the right technique. Maybe they're new. It's not the water fed pole that doesn't work. It's the person. Here's the thing. <clears throat> if I handed you a squeegee, you went up to a window, maybe not you because you've done it. I've handed up to somebody new who's never touched a squeegee. Gave them a squeegee. They walked up to a window, did the window, and it turned out like crap. Not once ever in history has somebody been like, well, that squeegee's obviously broken. That squeegee obviously doesn't work. This window looks like a horse sneezed on it. Which, by the way, was one of our codes the past few weeks. No, nobody does that. They all look at it and go, wow, I gotta get better at that. Because they understand what a squeegee's doing. They understand that. The problem comes in with water fed is because a lot of people don't truly get what's going on. Water comes in and it comes out magic? Well, when it doesn't work, they go, yeah, this doesn't work. This is stupid. This is... There are thousands and th tens of thousands of window cleaners out there using water fed poles. Loving it. I would never be a window cleaner without water fed pole. It's just absolutely amazing. You can't use it for everything, but it's a tool. Like somebody said, it's like a, a club in their golf bag, right? But it works. It 100% works. It's science. Of course it works. You got to do it right. If it's turning out like crap, it's because they didn't do it right. That's the reason. So please, please, please don't tell me water for poles don't work. If you want to get in a debate, put the comment down below on YouTube. Let's debate, I guess. But I don't want to. I don't want to. <sighs> um, so anyway, this week's code. By the way, that's our show. I wanted to be a little bit lighthearted. Just like some weird, weird myths. By the way, I want the comments to go higher here on YouTube. So comment down below. Share this out on Facebook. When this goes live on Friday, share it everywhere, man. I, I really do want to see views and things going up. Now, our audio side is always higher than our video side. But we're well over 200,000 plus downloads. Uh, on all this. So 200,000 listens or watches. Pretty crazy. But I want more people to kind of see this. And, and yes, obviously, I sell for Window Cleaning Resource. Um, and I would love every one of those people to be my customer. But that's not how it is. I just want to truly help. There's 145 plus episodes. 30 minutes along. Like 100. We're almost at 150. 150 straight weeks of this show. I hope that helps people. And I get emails and texts all the time, which, by the way, thank you. Thank you also to the guy who texted me and said, um, I just want to let you know I think you're an a-hole. Uh, that was very nice. He didn't say a-hole. He said the whole thing. But you know I don't cuss on the show. That was very nice, you know? That was a very good thing. I showed that to, uh, I showed that to my kids. And I said, see... This is why you don't let things bother you because people just like to say mean things. And by the way, the guy who called me on a-hole owns a window cleaning magazine in another country. So super cool, super classy, super classy. Stay classy, my friend. But anyway, uh, <laughs> if you think I'm an a-hole, let me know. That's cool. Uh, but no, this week's code for 5% off if you order through me, which do, definitely, uh, is water fed, or we'll say WFP, or water fed works. Yeah, water fed works. So I would like everybody to know. I know a lot of you do. I know we sell a ton of it. I've used water fed for 10, 12 years. I love it. But either way, 862-312-2026. Save that number in your phone as Jersey. I'm the only Jersey you know. Save it in there. I want to be your rep. Let me know uh, when you are ready to put order in. Put it all in your cart. Shop overnight and just text me be like yo jersey everything's in my cart water fed works and boom that's it i put the order in for you uh it's like a virtual awesome high five of awesomeness it's a lot of awesome so do it go do it check it out watch all the contents make sure to comment down below on youtube if you're commenting on podcast too go ahead and leave a review i'd love that that would be very super appreciated but either way until next week there go out there stay safe and healthy and be epic <laughs>